Today, economies and societies appear to be rapidly changing, and there are many different factors bringing about changes in every part of the EU. But how can we understand those factors and changes on a deeper level? How can we compare a small country like Malta to a country like Germany, the most populous EU member state? How can we compare and rank the performance of our own region or city in an EU perspective? How can we be sure that the statistics we use are based on a common set of rules and that the same definitions apply to all member states of the EU? We have the answers. Eurostat, the statistical office of the European Union. Our mission is to provide high-quality statistics for Europe. Together with national statistical institutes, we collect and process statistical data from all EU member states, EFTA and candidate countries. Cohesion policy invests in growth and jobs and promotes territorial cooperation. It is behind thousands of projects that have taken place all over Europe. Priority for cohesion policy funding is given to less developed regions. In statistical terms, this means to regions whose development is lagging behind the EU average. Official statistics published by Eurostat, such as the regional GDP per inhabitant, are used to decide if a region is eligible for European structural funds. If we look at the average population density in the EU, it is close to 100 inhabitants per square kilometer. However, if we take a closer look at the population density using the Geostat population grid, we can see that very few people, 3% of the EU population, live in areas that are close to this average. On the other hand, two out of three Europeans live in dense areas with more than 1,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. This is at least 10 times the EU average. Looking at the EU averages only hides the reality most people experience in their own environment. This is why we need regional, city and small area statistics. Let's have a look at the labour market. Generating employment, creating jobs are at the heart of EU policies like the Europe 2020 strategy or the European Investment Plan. Developments of the labour market are important for the economy, but they also influence our everyday lives, our financial security, our personal feeling of life satisfaction. This map shows the employment rate for the person aged 20 to 64 at the NATS Level 2 regions. The highest employment rates equal to or above 75%, which is the Europe 2020 target for this indicator, are marked in the two darkest shades of orange. There were more than 100 regions with such a high employment rate. It is also interesting to note that some capital regions stand out from their surroundings. Look at Berlin, Prague or Vienna. You can see that in Prague the employment rate was higher in the city, while in the case of Berlin and Vienna the employment rate is higher in the surrounding region. It is also interesting to see how the employment rate evolved in the recent period. This map shows the change in employment rate between 2006 and 2016. As you can see in some countries like Italy, France or Romania, this map is very colorful. It indicates that there are both increasing and decreasing employment rates within the same country. Developments in this period were anything but smooth due to the global economic and financial crisis. If you would like to see how a specific region evolved, you can use the Regions and Cities Illustrated data visualization tool available from the Eurostat website. It will be introduced in another video together with the Statistical Atlas. Employment is just one example of the many interesting topics we cover in the Eurostat Regional Yearbook, ranging from population, health and education to economy, tourism, transport and agriculture. We invite you all to explore the domain of regional and city statistics. You can download the publication from the Eurostat website.